everybody, welcome to Simple Art at Home with me, Laura Houston. Um, as you can see, uh, we have a special holiday today. October 1st is Chuseok in Korea, and you'll learn a little bit more about that in a few moments. Um, this show that you're watching is going to be geared towards fourth grade, fifth grade, and sixth grade. Um, however, you can be any age to enjoy this art lesson. You know, maybe even a kindergartner or an adult would love to watch this art lesson. So before we get started, let's take a look at some wonderful kids art that was sent in to me. Jefferson Dr. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Song, principal of Jefferson Elementary School. I am a huge fan of Simple Art at Home with Mrs. Houston and today I'm going to be sharing a little bit about a very special Korean holiday called Chuseok. Today is a special day in Korea called Chuseok or also known as Hangawi. It is an important traditional Korean holiday that is typically celebrated for three days. Some people call it Korean Thanksgiving. Just like we get a few days off for Thanksgiving, so it also happens for Chuseok in Korea. This year, Chuseok falls on Thursday, October 1st. However, Chuseok is always August 15th by the lunar calendar, when the moon is said to be the biggest and brightest. Chuseok is a mid-autumn harvest festival when traditionally families go to the mountains to tidy up their ancestors' graves or set up a traditional Korean table of food and bowing to their ancestors. Korea is a mountainous country, so many ancestors are buried in the mountains. After paying respects to their ancestors, they will enjoy a grand meal together using new crops. One very important essential food is called songpyeon a steamed rice cake filled with either beans or sesame seeds mixed with honey. It is in the shape of a half moon. Another typical food is called jeon, which is like a Korean savory pancake. In some countryside villages, you may see women dancing in a circle wearing hanboks, the Korean traditional clothing under the moonlight. Happy Chuseok! 즐거운 추석 보내세요! Thank you, Dr. Song, for teaching me about Chuseok. I love learning about different holidays around the world and within the United States, and I think it's great for all of us to learn. So thank you so much. Um, today's lesson will be about azaleas. We're going to paint azaleas, and you will have the opportunity to submit your work to the Korean American Day Art Contest. And I've provided a link in the description of this video that will take you right to their website. You're going to have to have a parent help you to submit your artwork. So the all the instructions are there at that link. And um, for today's lesson, you know, maybe you don't want to enter the contest. Maybe you do. Maybe you just want to paint along with me 
um, for fun. So as I said before, the lesson is about azaleas and it's the theme of Korea. So I put together a very quick video for you to watch. Let's take a look. You will have the opportunity to submit your artwork from today's lesson to the Korean American Day Art Contest. I will tell you more about this in a few moments. Today we will be painting azalea flowers. The azalea flower is one of Korea's favorite flowers. Azaleas are wildflowers that are known for their endurance and long lifespan. Kim Sowal is a beloved Korean poet and he wrote a very famous poem called The Azaleas. The poem touches on several feelings including love and sadness. The azaleas may be a metaphor for resilience during hardship. This is how you write the word azaleas in Korean Hangul lettering. I will teach you how to do this during today's art lesson. If you would like to enter the Korean American Day Art Contest, then you will need to follow the directions that you see here. Ask a parent to help you. The website is linked in the description of this video. Your artwork will need to be mailed to the Korean Education Center in Los Angeles. Everyone is invited to participate in the art contest. The due date is Tuesday, October 13th. Let's do some art. So azaleas are truly beautiful flowers. And uh, for today's lesson, you are going to need some paper, a pencil, Something to color with. I will be painting with watercolors. You can use colored pencils, crayons, oil pastels, whatever you'd like. You're going to want something to outline with, like a black pen or a black pencil or a black crayon. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm just using um, some watercolor paper, somewhat thick. Um, and I will start with sketching. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw the azalea flowers up here, but leave room at the bottom of the paper. I'm going to write azalea down here in Hangul um, lettering. So I'll start by uh, sketching. So we will start with, I'm going to actually start with one of the buds up here. So it's going to, and I will outline all of this with a black pen too. So we're just going to do, we're going to draw three flowers. This is kind of like the, the base that's holding the petals. It's going to go up like this. And then I will have five petals coming off of this. So it's going to be like, this one will be closest to us, like down here. And then we'll have another one going over here in this direction. Something like that. And again, I'm going to have five petals. I'll have one over here, kind of like this. Another one, another petal going in this direction. And then one more over here. Oops, have an eraser handy in case you need to erase. We'll show this one kind of going down in this direction. And then in the center of the flower, I'm going to draw some circles. And I'm just going to just do them with my black pen because I'm gonna fill the center with yellow. But azaleas have these little wispy stems, very tiny, and they kind of I'll just draw a few of the lines. I won't draw all of them. We'll just do the suggestion that there's some lines here. Put that there, okay. And then I'm going to bring my stem down like this. Let me just kind of sketch out what I want this to look like. Uh, let's see, we'll have another flower coming off in this direction. And then I'm going to bring the stem down this way. We're just going to kind of cut it off right there. And then we'll have another 
petal kind of coming off like this. Another little flower. So I'm going to draw two more flowers at the ends of these stems as well. So again, we'll start with this little support structure here. Just kind of put three, you know, triangle points on it. And this will kind of come over this way. I'm going to turn my paper a little bit. So this flower, let's see, it'd be going like this. Again, I want to do five step, five petals. Something like this. And I want to, I actually want to bring these up like this. That's better. There we go. So there's two. I'll do one over here. Three. Four. And five. And I want to curve this out a little bit. I'm going to do the same center. I'm going to put some circles in here because I will fill those in with yellow. And then I'm just going to make a few of the stems. Okay. I'm going to soften this transition too. I like, definitely like sketching in pencil first. We'll add leaves too. So over here, again, we will do this little support system like that. And this, this azalea is not going to be as open. So I'm going to draw it just kind of like the leaves kind of coming up like this. And we'll have another one. This will be more of a closed azalea. Coming this way. But we'll still show the tips of the other petals over here. Now I do have different levels of art lessons. I have early intermediate which started at three o'clock today. So I want you to watch the class that's the most um, comfortable for you because grade level doesn't always match artistic ability. You might feel more comfortable at a more um, like early intermediate level. It's completely up to you. You get to decide that. Okay. Why don't we add some leaves for interest? Okay, I think I'll just draw my leaves with, with pen because, let's see, I'll go like maybe make one here. I'll just draw a line that kind of suggests the center of the leaf. I can make another leaf here, maybe a little bit smaller. Maybe show it going behind and maybe a leaf over here. We can do another one kind of turning back here behind that leaf. We can do, looks like there's a big space right here. Just kind of look and see where you have openings. And remember, you don't have to do your project exactly like mine. I'm just making suggestions for what you could do if you are interested. But if you want to follow along with me, you are certainly welcome to. But everybody's art is going to turn out differently. I'm going to add some little lines in here to show the curve of the petals. And remember, you can, you can pause this video, even though I'm live streaming, you can pause and I will still be right here. I think for the rest of this, I'm going to use my thicker Sharpie to outline. I 
There we go. Sometimes I like the look of using two different line weights, like a thinner black line and then a thicker black line. There we go. So I'm just carefully tracing over everything that I just did. And it's okay to turn your paper because sometimes it's easier to draw certain curves when your paper is turned a specific direction. I was very glad that, and I mentioned this early, I was so glad that Dr. Song taught me about Chuseok. It seems like a very beautiful time of year, a very beautiful holiday celebration. I like learning about different holidays. Um, all, you know, there's so many different holidays that are celebrated in the United States because we have so many different cultures, which is wonderful. And just different, there's different holidays all around the world. And I've always loved learning. And I think that's a great way for people to gain respect for one another when we learn about different cultures. So here we have a basic azalea branch, I guess you could say, with three azalea flowers. Now down here at the bottom, I am going to write the word azalea in Korean Hangul lettering. And um, you're going to want to separate it into three sections, okay? So just kind of think of centering with three sections. I'll start right here. Now, I didn't know how to do this. I knew about Hangul because last year I got to visit Jefferson's kindergarten Korean class, dual language immersion class, because I taught an art lesson on Hangul Day. But Mrs. Joy Park, who is my coworker um, at the district office, she is our Korean translator, and she taught me how to write azaleas. And she gave me the idea to do azalea flowers. And remember, you can pause this video if you need to. Okay, so we have azaleas. And now I'm going to start adding color. Azaleas are pink, some are purple. Um, if you want to go online, you can search you can do a Google search and look at different examples of azaleas. I'm gonna use a purple, and I think I've shown you this before that I always do a sample sheet, and I just keep this. I think I'm gonna use this seven on the left, this purple, which is this one. I use that as a guide. Okay. And I'm just using Crayola watercolors, which are very soft and pastel-like. If you saw me do the kindergarten lesson and the first grade lesson, I used these. I used um, Dr. Martin's watercolors. They're very, very vibrant, but it's because I wanted a very specific color of pink. This is going to be very soft and pastel-like, and I might blend some other colors into this as well. I'll mix some different purples. And I'm using a round watercolor brush. You'll wanna have a paper towel nearby if you're using watercolors, if you ever want to blot your paintbrush or blot extra paint, paint. 
but this is definitely just a very soft, um, a soft, simple, um, beautiful type of, of paint. Very subtle and soft. And I'm trying not to color it paint, like to paint those little circles because I'm going to reserve like a yellow color for those. Okay, now just to add a little interest, I'm going to add some darker purpley blue. So maybe this one right here to parts of the flower. And I think it will blend nicely and just, you know, make them a little more interesting. Just to kind of put some different shades of color in there. There we go. And watercolors tend to fade a little bit as they dry. So that the they'll blend a little more. Maybe I'll make it look like they're, this one's a little bit darker here. There we go. And I'll put just a few streaks of purple. And I think it makes it look a little more interesting when you have different colors layered. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna take a thinner brush and add some yellow. You know what, I'm gonna wait because I don't know if my purple is dry enough. So I'm just gonna give that purple a little time to dry. Let me move on to the green. So for the green, I'm just coloring the stem. And remember, by all means, you can use any colors that you want. Maybe you have something, a totally different idea that you want to do for this, if you wanna enter your work into the art contest. You don't have to do what I'm doing. And you know, the thing that I really like about especially painting nature like nature is very organic right so not not all flowers are going to look exactly the same it's okay and yours yours will look a little bit obviously a little bit different i'm going to add some brown into the stem just to add some interest there we go. And maybe I'll even put some different some different green tones on on these little support pieces. How about that? Just have fun with your paint. Experiment. You can always get a new piece of paper if you want to and start over. Okay. Now let's see if that purple is dry a little bit. I'll add some of the yellow. Even if the yellow runs, I, I think it's still a pretty, a pretty look. That's what, you know, watercolors are made to blend. But I think the yellow stands out nicely against the purple. And if you want to enter the art contest, remember the theme is the charm of Korea. So do some research. If you're not sure, do a little research and find out some other ideas. Okay, so I'm going to do one more thing with the paint. And I'm going to just use pure water. Let me get a fresh cup here. Just going to use fresh water and I'm wetting 
in a like a curved motion this edge of the paper and I'm going to add a little hint of blue that's going to kind of fade out here and I'm going to just take this around the paper and it's going to tie all of this in to make a beautiful hopefully a beautiful composition here and I can just add water to kind of curve it out around the edges and do the same thing in all four corners in a curved a curved shape here I'm going to turn my paper around to be, do a better job at this. I really do hope that you take pictures of your artwork. I love to see how your art turns out and it helps me also to know what types of lessons to teach when I see your work. There, I'm just kind of fading this out. It's just a soft subtle look. Let's see. I can do a little bit more over here. It's just the idea that there's some blue there. Okay. So I recommend that you look up azaleas on the internet and see all the different colors they come in. This this was a project that I did uh, for the first, second, and third graders. If you want a different design, you can watch that episode. And then I'll just show you with the younger kids, the preschool kids, and kindergarten, we did this project. So um, if any of those look good to you, go back and watch the videos. It's entirely up to you. You can do any one that you want. Yeah, do what you want for the art contest, anything. Okay, so there is my finished product. I will meet you back up at the easel. So thank you so much for watching today. Um, happy Chusok, October 1st. And um, I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. Please take pictures of your art and send it in to me. My email is on the bottom corner of the screen. And before we go, um, let's take one last look at some student art and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.